Hey guys, this is Brad Jackson from Jackson Audio, and you're watching The Jack Sunday Show. My name is Brad Jackson, and whether I'm flying airplanes or building pedals, I'm always learning. Join me, and together we'll expand our horizons. This is Jackson Audio. Okay, so as you know, we're building a chorus pedal. I have been in development hell uh, for the last month, which is there's a very special period of an engineer's life called development hell. It is the period of time between concept of an idea and the execution or the successful execution of that idea. So I've been dealing with that for the last month. You may have noticed we didn't have a show last week just because I did not have time to stop uh, working on software and hardware and trying to, trying to work through this issue. So let me tell you about the issue. Um, the chorus pedal uses Bucket Brigade delay chips. Every chorus uses a delay chip of, of some sort to delay your signal slightly, maybe between 5 to 50 milliseconds of time. And when, during that delay, you can modulate that clock speed up and down because there is a clock that has to happen to tell the Bucket Brigade chip how fast to process what comes into the chip versus what comes out of the chip. So you, let's just speak in very general terms. Put your guitar signal into the delay chip, eventually it has to come out, right? But you have to have something to tell that chip how long it takes to get through that chip, which is basically an analog delay. Well, the clock signal does that for you. And the clock signal is just a rigid square wave uh, signal that's basically telling all the little soldiers in that little chip how fast we march together in line. If you send a faster signal, your sound gets through the chip that much faster. If you send a slow signal, it goes through the, the chip slower. So the slower it goes, the more extreme settings you will hear when you apply a, an LFO to that chip. So case in point, if you have something like a vibrato pedal, if you send a, a relatively slow signal like 10,000 hertz or 12,000 hertz, something like that, when you modulate that signal, it's gonna be a really seasick, kind of a warbly sound. It's a very cool sound, you know, if you use properly. Uh, conversely, if you take a really fast signal, let's say 150,000 um, cycles, which is really fast for a, an analog chip, then you get the really 80s, super kind of tight, compressed, coarse modulation sound. It's a great, great sound. Uh, it's so funny because there's so many great sounds from extremely fast settings to extremely slow settings. There's a huge range of sounds to be found in the same circuit, same chip, everything. Well, I've been working through that this week. And the specific issue I've been dealing with has, has been how we generate the clock signal. When I conceptually designed this pedal, I was gonna have my microprocessor output a clock signal because I, I proved to myself that it would do it and it works great. Uh, in practice, you know, actually hearing it, what would happen is the microprocessor, for whatever reason, would start dropping clock signals. And if you're dropping a clock signal, well, there's a gap of time where the out, where the analog chip is not outputting anything because there's no drill sergeant saying, "Hey, you're going to march at this speed." Um, it was all great when when we would just leave the the clock signal static, like just set it to a frequency and leave it alone. It worked great. But as soon as we pl applied a low frequency oscillator to that signal to try to move it around a little bit and get some of that vibrato effect, that's when it would start dropping beats. And that was, it, it was really kind of a bummer because it means I had to kind of do like a page one rewrite of how I was going about this. That was about two weeks ago. So, okay, we start plan B. What can I do to make a clock signal that's more reliable and that doesn't overwhelm the microprocessor? Because one of our concerns, one of the reasons why I think that the microprocessor was dropping beats is because uh, I think it was just overwhelming it. It was just, it was asking too much of it because the processor had to process every single little square wave signal. So it was very, it was a very high intensive, constant demand on the processor. Um, so there are other chips, there's external chips that we found that are clock generator chips, that's what they do. And they have their own external clock, uh, crystal clock that tells that clock generator chip how fast to run. So it's kind of a freestanding oscillator. Great, we tried that. They worked brilliant. I mean, they were they were perfect. So we were able to fire the pedal up. Um, 
really hear how it sounds, all the ideas that we had, and it sounded phenomenal, except for one thing. Every time that the microprocessor would talk to, the, to that external chip, you would hear a digital artifact of not the clock, but the information that was being sent to the clock to tell it what to do. And I worked with that for about a week, trying to find read which way to change how we use those chips. I went to a different architecture of chips. First, we started out with a I squared C uh, communication bus that was really noisy. Then we moved to a serial bus that was quite a bit better than the noise, but still not perfect. So, um, yeah, it's been it's been a wild week trying to figure out what to do. And I have to tell you like, a really really sweet story. <laughs> There's some buddies of mine, Josh Scott from JHS Pedals and Joel Corti from Chase Bliss. Joel from Chase Bliss is a complete genius. Um, and so I called him and said, hey, well, this is what I'm dealing with. Do you, do you have any insight into how, into, into why I'm getting these really weird spurious noises? And he said, well, try this. Here's an idea. Maybe it's your, um, maybe it's your um, charge pump, which a charge pump is a device that lets you put nine volts into a pedal and get 18 volts out. So the the course pedal we're working on runs at 15 volts, so I had a charge pump in there. And he said, well, I've had this, this issue happen where um, the noise of the clock in the charge pump was intermodulating with another clock. And it would create these random noises that you couldn't quite pin down because they didn't make sense of, of, of why uh, you're hearing that noise. If, if you have a noise in a circuit, if it's at a certain rhythmic sound or a certain frequency, it's not that hard to find out where it comes from. So you just start looking through your whole pedal and you look for that frequency. If an, if an oscillator is oscillating that frequency, um, well then it's, it's related to that. But when you have random noises that aren't always there, sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not, those are the gremlins that are really hard to track down because you can't seem to find a rhyme or reason for why they're happening. So he had a really great suggestion there Ultimately, his suggestion uh, didn't solve the problem, but it was a great, it was a great lesson. Um, I never even considered that, but I'm grateful for Joel for, for suggesting it. So earlier in the day, I had called Josh Scott at JHS Pedals and said, hey Josh, this is what I'm dealing with. Can you help me here? Um, and man, it's always really weird to call people like Joel or Josh, um, and not because they're not phenomenal people, because they are, but the thing that's, it's always uncomfortable to call someone who you feel is a competitor and say, hey, um, please help, because I'm, I'm hurting here and I can't figure this out. Will you please help me? Well, if you want to be selfish about it, and um, it's, in, it's not in their best interest to help me. It's in their best interest for me to fail. Um, that's kind of the intuitive response, isn't it? That it's, it's if, if I help you, somehow I'm hurting myself. Well, this is what Josh said. Um, I said, this is what I'm dealing with. He said, oh yeah, I've been there. Um, so great. He said, tell me what I'm gonna do. I'll just send you all my schematics. I'll send you the schematic for the Emperor, for the Panther Cub, and for the Unicorn. Cause we use like these bucket brigade kind of devices in there. I'll, I'll just show you how I'm doing it. And I, I'm not kidding. I'm not trying to be dramatic when I say this. I literally almost cried because when, when you're just pounding your head against a wall and you're getting nowhere and you reach out to a friend who they don't have to help you. He could have said, man, I'm sorry you're having trouble, but that's not my problem. He didn't. He took it on and said, hey, you know what? I'm gonna just tell you everything I know. I'm even gonna do better than that. I'm gonna give you my schematics and my layouts for how I'm doing my pedals because I don't want you to hurt. I wanna do what I can to help. And if I can help, I want to. That is the kind of dude Josh Scott is. And that's the kind of dude Joel Cordy is that they could have told me to pound sand and get out of there and I hope you fail because I'll make more money if you fail. No, they said, I want to help you because we're all in this together. We're part of a very small industry. I mean, there's so few people that work in this industry designing products that there's a very small, it's a very small club. It was, it was the most mind blowing thing for me that their character was such that they didn't view me as a threat. They viewed me as a friend and they wanted to help. And it just, I kind of just walked around for the rest of the day and the days, like just blown away at their compassion and kindness and that it just completely changed my day so uh i have to just say thank you so much for josh scott and joel cordy for being just tremendous human beings and being super generous when you didn't have to be so it just it made me think the world of them i i have massive respect for both of those men before yesterday but certainly now i respect them as business owners and friends now so it's it was just a great week for me um, I'm still working through a few issues. I'm having to kind of change how I do stuff.
but I know exactly how to do it now and we're gonna be great. So that's that's been my week. If you look around my desk and everything, it's a complete mess. I, we didn't even try to clean because frankly, I didn't have time to clean right now. It's just a matter of, let's, just, let's get some content out there and um, I want you to see what it looks like, the good, bad, the ugly. And this is, right now it's the ugly because I mean, I'm living in here. I went to bed last night at 4.30 in the morning. Woke up at 10 today because Josh was at my front door saying, hey, it's time to do a video, and I completely forgot about it. So, yeah, this right now is kind of the, the ugly side of things, but it's actually the really fun stuff. It's the, it's the time when you grow. Um, it's the time when you learn a lot and you figure out things that, you know, conceptually, my ideas were great. Uh, they did work really well from what I've heard. It's just that I've had some artifacts that I couldn't quite figure out. Um, but these, this dirty period, this messy period, is when you do your is when you do your heavy growth, and it's you know you, you stack enough of these together end to end, and several years down the road you kind of you really get a pretty good handle on what you're doing. Um, so I love this kind of season. It's it's ugly, it's messy, it's 18 hour days and very little sleep, but there's a lot of growth and that's always great. So um, it's been a lot of growth uh, on the tech side for me, learning more stuff. But man, the biggest growth that's happened all week was from what I learned. Not from just nerding out and doing stuff on my own, but what guys like Josh and Joel taught me this week. That's been the greatest growth. Because we are in this together. We're all friends trying to pursue a common thing. Um, I, I just learned so much about how to conduct myself from those guys. I mean, they was a master class in humility and kindness. So that was the greatest lesson I learned all week. So. All right, that's been the Jackson Sunday Show. As always, I'm Brad Jackson, Jackson Audio. I have tons of work ahead of me, so I'm gonna get back to work on this chorus pedal because Christmas is coming and you need a chorus pedal. So we'll see you soon. See you next week on the Jackson Sunday Show. Take care.